So hello again, hi Connor and hello Alex. Um, I would like to tell you that uh, a new Zoom link will be sent every time we have a meeting just before the meeting. So it is very important that you check your uh, email so that you can join in with the new Zoom link for Art Start, okay? Because otherwise I'm not able to record the meeting and this meeting is being recorded. So um, at the, la the last meeting, what we had just discussed is that uh, the reason for Art Start, okay? And, um, and the reason is that Art Start is uh, a program that I have created so that we can teach art appreciation to very young students, okay? So that they will appreciate art and not only appreciate it, but also go ahead and do some art because when you do art it really helps with the mental growth of a of a student or an individual and uh, i told you to... go ahead I already, I already got some artwork that i've been working on for like a little while now you want to see okay sure sure why don't you email them to me okay uh, that would be whatever artwork you are uh, working on. If you can email it to me, that would be wonderful. So uh, today we're going to uh, be looking at the artist by the name of Michelangelo. So I'm going to share my screen with you right now um, and open up my PowerPoint here. Hold on, I have to figure out where my... Um... You wanna see? There you are. Okay, all right. Now that we are uh, resuming our recording uh, for you, I got it, I got it, thank you. So um, we're gonna discuss Leonardo da Vinci, okay? Now, uh, Vinci was a Renaissance era painter and he was a polymath, okay? So he uh, it was an architect, an engineer, a mathematician. So he was a lot of things, like many, many things. And when you are all of these things, you know, sometimes we are, we are scientists, we are plumbers, we are, uh, electricians, but this man was almost everything. And so when a person has so many, um, what do you call it, um, uh, skills that he is very, very good at, you are, you call that person a polymath. So he was an architect, an engineer, a mathematician. He was interested in anatomy, botany, zoology, geology, and many, many subjects. So um, if you have just joined in, I welcome you. Could you please mute yourself? There, I muted you. All right, so he was born on April 15th, 1452 in Antiano, Italy. Uh, he spent time in Milan, Rome, Bologna, Venice, and France. And he died in France on 
the 2nd of May in 1519 at the age of 67. So at that time in the 1500s, it was considered to be uh, quite old. But these days, you know, you can live a longer life because of all kinds of, you know, um, uh, drugs and, you know, facilities that we have and what we know about different diseases and how to cure them and so forth. But at that time, it was he was considered a uh, ripe old man to be dead at at 67. Okay, so um, where so all of my art start the first 12 art start classes will follow this uh, particular um, you know thing. So I will discuss where he was, what he was good at, where he was born, and when where he died, where he spent the majority of his time. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about his painting education. Okay, so who um, helped him paint? He was a pupil of Andrea Di Verrocchio, a painter and a sculptor. Okay, and I think, name, go ahead. I think it was Michelangelo. Go ahead. We are discussing was, Michelangelo. Yes. Yeah, I have wrote a book about Leonardo da Vinci already. That's wonderful, Alex. That's wonderful. Why don't you send me a call uh, uh, if you have it on? Um... Yeah, I got it on Google Docs. That's what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, so just send me a send me a link to it. Okay, I'm gonna meet, mute you right now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, um, uh, so his the famous paintings of his teacher, the Virgin and Child, and Baptism of Christ, and so forth. And where are these paintings at? If you were to go to the National Gallery in London, you would find the Virgin and Child there. And uh, the Baptism of Christ is in the Museum in Fiji in Florence. Okay. Um, some of the famous sculptures were David, uh, which is in Bargello in Italy. All right. Re Leonardo trained with Verrocchio for about seven years. Now let's look at uh, um, Leonardo da Vinci's famous paintings. His most famous painting is this little painting called the Mona Lisa, you know, and it's the one of the most, actually the most famous painting in the world. And there's always, and I had the opportunity to see it in the Louvre in Paris, and uh, there's always a crowd around uh, Mona Lisa, okay? And uh, the Virgin of the Rocks, this is another of his um, paintings, earlier paintings, um, and it is also in the Louvre. Here's another painting. So uh, this is Lady with the Mine, um, and it is in the, in the museum in Poland, Krakow, Poland. This is yet another painting. So when you look at all these paintings, what's the one thing that comes to mind? Uh, anybody, you can unmute yourself and tell me. I'm gonna refresh uh, your, uh, show you again. What's the one thing that comes to mind when you look at all these paintings? One of the things that jumps out at you is like how realistic they are, right? Very, very realistic. Here's another one that he did um, but this is not a complete painting, but he just did the, uh, the background, the head of the woman. And here's another one. It's a self-portrait of, uh, of himself. And here is one of the most scientific paintings called the Vitruvian Man um, that we use, we see in a lot of science journals and so forth. Um, this is another uh, very famous painting of his. It's called The Last Supper. Okay, it's a very animated painting when you look at it. Um, and uh, that's his depiction of the Last Supper. Here's another landscape of the Arno Valley. He didn't do very many landscapes. This is one of his landscapes that um, uh, he did. And here is another very famous painting called the Annunciation. Very realistic, right? And look at the architectural details. It is just amazing. It looks as though uh, it's so realistic that we could actually walk into the painting, doesn't it? Here's another one, uh, Madonna of the Carnation. 
It's uh, in the Munich in Germany. And here's uh, this is called the Benoit Madonna. And uh, here's another one. It's an unfinished painting of Saint Jerome in the wilderness. This was not this was not finished. Okay, so um, Vinci again to reiterate was a polymath, meaning he um, could do a lot of things and he was very good at it. Very, very good at it. He was good in anatomy, botany, geology. Uh, he was an architect, an engineer, a mathematician, and so forth. Okay, so let's see. Um, there, that's a little introduction of a very famous painter from the Renaissance era. And uh, you can go through your PowerPoints that I send you and you can refer back to them and study each painting at your level because some of our students are five years old and some are 18. So the learning curve, like, you know, the learning capacity of all, the, your, all of you is different. So therefore, I'm just going to just show you some of these paintings, but I encourage you and the parents uh, to look through these and just study it just a, just a little so that you have, you know, a few words here and there. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's look at, um, let's try to sketch. Today, I'm going to teach you how to sketch. Okay, so if you remove your paper, okay. And you start sketching. So here's a here's a uh, sketchbook I have. You you've got one in your kit. And so when you begin to sketch, go ahead and take a nice pencil, and you can draw a shape. Because some of you are so little, you could just start off with small shapes. Some of you could just put your hand out like like this and try to copy the contours of your hand. Some of you can do. Uh, a more complicated sketch. But for those of you who are very little, I would just start with simple shapes. For instance, you can draw a circle, right? You can draw a circle. There you go. Uh, let's see if you can see this. So if you draw a circle, and then uh, if you wanted to do some hatching, you can start shading. Shading can be done in different ways. One is you can take your pencil and just from the, you could just do these things right here. Let's see if this will work for you. Right, I think. So we could do some shading like this. Okay. Then there's cross hatching. Cross hatching would be so you do some shapes like that. And then cross hatch, go in the opposite perpendicular direction. That's cross hatching. Circularism, circularism is when you take your um, pencil and you just do little circles like that. Contouring is okay, this is the shape of the uh the circle so you contour and you shade like you follow the contour of the thing like maybe this is an orange so you follow the shape that would be contouring okay so now let me just show you like if you can just do uh you can just make a little flower so say you do one round then another and another and another semicircular one and then you can make a flower, okay? You could do shapes like squares, triangles, or abstract shapes, shapes that have no particular, uh, no particular way that you can, let's see. So this is, this is a flower, okay, hold on, there you go. Let's see if this will work better. Okay, so here's a flower I drew. Here's sort of like a rectangle, a triangle, and an abstract shape. An abstract shape would be something that has no known shape. That would be abstract, okay? So things like that. You could, uh, there are different ways, different techniques of shading, and I brought up um, 
these uh, good links for you to click on and then look at different shading techniques. I, I would recommend these shading techniques. So um, your homework then would be to draw anything that you would like and go ahead and send me examples. These, these following things are examples from my home. These are, this is a money plant. I just draw a money plant. You can, uh, you can use this and draw it for yourself if you like. There are, you see how different shapes there are. This is an ivy leaf, you know, and they're gorgeous. Um, so you can draw it that way. You can take a flower and you can try to shade like that, different colors of flowers, okay? And you can fill it in with uh, like, instead of filling it with color this time, just attempt to um, shade it, just use a shading technique, okay? Here's a chili pepper. So what I'm trying to illustrate is you can use anything that's around the house to draw, okay? Here is cherry tomatoes, you know, just a big tomato. Look at all the nice shapes. So if I were to draw this tomato, I would start off with like a, a round shape. And then I would just, you know, add some extra shapes. Like for instance, if I started off with this shape, then I would just create a tomato by adding the contours of the tomato as you see. And that'll help you with your, um, uh, with how you go ahead and, um, you know, and uh, uh, draw the tomato. So, Mateo and Malik, do you have uh, any questions? Is an apple. You can open up your video if I can, so I can, we can see you. I do have a question, yes. Yes, go ahead. Um, when you said we can draw anything we want, do you mean like we could draw like, does it have to be something that has shading in it? Like, does no, it have to be? Uh, uh, because in this particular class, so I'm just trying to um, uh, do certain classes. So we're starting with sketching, okay? So I'm trying, just trying to go step by step, and then we will go ahead and paint, for instance, and so forth. You know, so. Uh, you can do whatever you want because you know you are probably a little older. How old are you, Malik? I'm 16. 16. So you are uh, either in eighth grade or ninth grade. What grade are you in? I'm in 11th. Oh, you're in 11th already. You're a young one for 11th. That's wonderful, yeah. Malik. So uh, are you? Did you start to apply to uh, college already? No, I'm gonna do that uh, later on in this year later on this year but isn't it too late already to apply december 31st is the last date isn't it i'm not sure okay but if they don't let me then i'll know okay uh why don't we um why don't we um you have my number uh when i send you my email my phone number is listed why don't you um call me and then we'll discuss uh, about your college application. How about that? Okay? Because there are uh, places where you could apply and uh, you could get a scholarship. So I would love to discuss that with you. Okay? And um, so, but uh, at your level, for instance, you can uh, go ahead and draw whatever you want to draw. So if you probably, uh, if you had a chance and saw some clips of, the movie that I recommended you to watch yesterday. I, I learned better when I, I remember better when I paint. Uh, it, it tells you that the, it's very, very important to not only just look at something beautiful, but also get into the act of creating something beautiful. That's what art is all about. And art can be in any shape or form. It could be a painting, but some people express themselves better through music. So it, you could be a creator in terms of music. Some people express themselves in photography. 
you could be a creator, like a, a photographer. So any type of thing that is beside just learning from books, like beside reading, and it is creative, it lets out your creative energies, that's art. And my, um, my uh, what do you call it, my efforts are always in that direction, in that we want you to be able to create and appreciate art all around. If you go out, walk it downtown, walk in the suburbs, you look at a sunset. You know, people who are creative, we look beyond what the letters are. We look at the beauty of things in our surroundings and that's art appreciation, okay? So what my uh, attempt by teaching you a little bit, we're not teaching you a lot, not teaching you a lot about Leonardo. I'm just teaching you uh, about a few artists and what they have done, you know? And um, by the end of like, you know, you will probably not be with me when you go off to college, but those five-year-olds who are there with me and attend my monthly classes and grow with me, they will learn a lot of names of artists, terms like polymath, terms like, you know, uh, contouring. What's a contouring? You know, a sketching terminology. Um, what is shading? What's cross hatching? What's circleism? So these are new words that little five-year-olds and eight-year-olds and 10-year-olds probably have not been introduced yet. But maybe Malik, at your age, you have been. But then you can take this little knowledge and go on to a much higher level, okay? So uh, the painting in the background, this is my original painting, okay? You can see it better, I think, over here, right? So um, every, every, every day that I come with, with classes, I will be showcasing in the background one of my paintings. Mateo, are you there with us? If not, let's see. All right. I think Mateo is uh, not there. But yes. Mateo, you are? Oh, hello. And tell me your name and your age. Okay, uh, 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 I think my name is Mateo mm -hmm. or something because I think I draw my apple. Okay, and how old are you? Uh, just a uh, six. 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 So, uh, Mateo. Um, did you uh, did you draw something for me yesterday? Yes. No. No. Not, okay. Why not. don't you draw something again today, and then send me an email with your drawing? I did receive two drawings yesterday. So, for those of you who are older, I would like for you uh, to send me a drawing. It could be anything that you've done in the past, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a collection of your drawings and we are going to have the 12th class will be an exhibition of your drawings. And some of those drawings may be selected to go into greeting cards, like blank cards, and then we may sell them. And if we sell enough, when we get money, we will be, you will get a scholarship. Some, some people may get a scholarship. Some people who have really, really good art or show promise, or are very, very, um, you know, are very, um, uh, you know, they are very, uh, what do you call it? They want to learn. They show me that they are willing to learn and they are putting in effort. Those people may be rewarded with a good scholarship, okay? And you're six, so I want you to draw. And Malik here is 16, 10 years difference. You do a lot of growing in those 10 years. Right, so your art is going to be different, but during the next 12 classes, you're going to learn about different artists, and they're not just 12 artists. I think the last a few classes I've taken two or three artists from you know the uh, current times, so you're going to learn about more than 12 artists and their famous works. So by the end of 12 classes, 
you will have a certain vocabulary that uh, artists use in appreciating art, okay? So uh, Mateo, be sure to send me, and uh, if your parent is there, uh, ask them to help you email me, take a good photograph of your painting, email it and send it to me, okay? Will you do that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you I think I call my daddy. You can call your daddy, okay. Well, have your daddy photograph your artwork and send it to me, okay? Yeah, I think uh, it's my daddy here. That's, hello, uh, that's very nice. Nice to meet you virtually. I don't see you on video, but that's, that's all right. All right. So, okay, thank you. Malik, does that make sense? Okay. Yes. All right. So today, so be sure to go and look at these shading technique videos. These are good uh, uh, techniques for what we are what we are trying to um, accomplish today. And I cannot teach you um, uh, better than that. But uh, you should know after today, even though you are six, Mateo and Malik would already know. But one of the vocabulary uh, words to take away from this one is how to shade using hatching technique. Hatching would be to go straight down and then in the perpendicular way. Okay, cross hatching. And then circularism. Circularism uh, is to go round. Contouring is to go contouring to the shape, like that of an apple, a leaf, or, any, yep, or anything from your, your home. Just pick anything and try to draw that thing. And then shade it and use one of these shading techniques that are in these videos. Okay? Sounds good? Yep. Do you have any other questions for me? Um, I'm naturally better at drawing than I am at painting. So, you know, uh, the painting you asked us to do yesterday, I made that, but I don't know how to give it to you. Oh, take a picture, and my phone is a cell phone. You can even text it to me. If you cannot email it to me, do you know how to upload it to an email and send it? Yeah. Yeah, just do it that way. That way, if it comes to my email, then I can um, upload it and make up class 12, which is an exhibition. Uh, okay, so whatever you have, just go ahead and send it to me. That would be really nice. Okay. So you say you're better at sketching than painting. I, I think I have to draw. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, gonna, I have to draw. Oh, that. 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 Ooh. Okay. Okay. So Malik, you were saying something? Yeah, I'm better at drawing and painting with the pencil better than painting. Okay, that's good. That's a very very good technique. In fact. Um, in one of the international shows uh, that's going on in New York, um, one of my artist friends has a sketch of his son. And uh, this has come all the way from India to New York. And it made the top 70, 70 uh, art pieces of art there. And it was just a sketch. So um, if you're going to uh, you know, continue with this and follow my emails, I'll send you opportunities where you can send your uh, drawings and sketches and all for competitions. So Malik, you can, uh, you know, just follow just my emails. You don't have to follow uh, uh, along a lot, but you, you will get some uh, good help and suggestions that way. Okay. All right. Okay, perfect. Any other questions you have? Both of you. Mateo. Pretty much it. That's pretty much it, yeah. So, um, okay, and make sure you go through uh, these um, these PowerPoints that I'm sending you. There is a lot of information in there, but that is 
that is good for a five-year-old or a 18-year-old, okay? Because it, you guys are of different age groups and you'll take on different, at different levels. All right, okay then. So uh, for the homework for tomorrow is just send, upload a picture of a sketching, um, of some sketch that you've done today or in the, in the past, that would be great. Thank you so much. All right. Tell them bye. 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 Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Do not ever leave. No, 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 no. <laughs>